The DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Is it a good camera for vlogging? I got this camera on April 2024. I am not a camera guru. I am just in it from the POV of someone that is just buying it and using it. That being said, let's get into this. When I unboxed it, my first impressions was it looks very sleek. It literally earns its name as a pocket three because it can fit in your pocket. Because it has these little ridges on the back, it's very easy to hold and it has nice grip. So it doesn't feel like an iPhone that's gonna slip out of your hand. And it also comes with an extender. It makes it slightly bigger, but it also makes it easier to have a full stick to hold onto. The gimbal itself and the camera, it's a weird thing to say, but it's really cute. Without sounding like a creep, it's very easy to hide and to not look like you're filming out in public, especially if you get anxious about filming in public, is the perfect camera because unless people know what it is, you can't even tell it's a camera. Let's talk about the user interface and controls. Turning it on and off is very easy. You can either flip the viewfinder horizontally to turn it on, or you can just press the record button and it will turn on as well. Same thing with turning it off. You can flip the viewfinder vertically to turn it off or you can press and hold the record button and it will also turn off. There is an app called the DJI Mimo app that you download when you get the DJI. Once you open the app and it senses the DJI is close by, it'll automatically come up on your screen and you just have to click that you want to connect. Very easy process. But we'll get into the app and what you can do in the app a bit later. One thing that you do have to get used to is filming on a gimbal. I find that you can't move very drastically and very fast. You kind of have to pace yourself and move slower, but you'll get a feel for it. The gimbal might face upwards and not come back down to a regular level. And if it does, what you can do is if you click the joystick twice, it will realign the gimbal to its original position, just looking straight forward and you're good to go. Another thing that I love about this compared to like, let's say an iPhone. One thing about the iPhone is the back camera is better than the front camera. And if you wanna be able to see yourself in the viewfinder as you're filming, you're gonna have to use the front camera. It's not gonna be as good of a quality as the back camera. So the great thing about this is you can swivel the gimbal with whichever way you need to, and you'll always have exactly the same quality. So right now I can see myself, I can see what the framing looks like and the quality is not lost, which is fantastic. There's two ways to swivel the gimbal. There's a bottom corner that has a little swivel arrow that you can click, or you can click the joystick three times and it'll swivel around. And you can click it another three times, it'll swivel back around. The zoom is kind of weaker. It can zoom times three. However, one thing you learn in general with cameras is it's always better to go closer to whatever object you're trying to film than to use a zoom because the zoom obviously decreases quality. So if it's a situation where you need to zoom, you can't get closer to the subject, then you kind of just have to use whatever this gives you, which is three times. Overall feel and ease of using the DJI, it's very easy. As we know, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is a really small camera. So if you wanted to have a second screen that is bigger, you can use the app as your second screen. Whatever you're filming will show up on your iPhone. For this thumbnail, I had to put the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 on the floor to get my shoes in frame. So obviously if it's on the floor, I can't really see the viewfinder, but I was using my phone as a second viewfinder and I was able to see how I was framing everything. And you can also control how you frame the shot on the app. It also has a bunch of features. If you want to look slightly better on camera, it has beauty filters on the app, which you can adjust to whatever specifications best suits you. That way you can always make sure, you know, you're looking decent in front of the camera. And that is something that I think a lot of people appreciate. And speaking of beauty features, we're getting into cool features in general of the DJI. I Osmo Pocket 3. So first one we have is wide lens. Something that a lot of vloggers look for in cameras is when the camera can showcase more of their surroundings. And this does that. It has a wider lens than the average camera I've found. I've used Sony, Canon, and iPhone with the natural lens that they all come with. This has the widest lens. I have my iPhone. You can see there's slightly less on the iPhone than there is on the DJI. Another cool feature is the 90 and 180 degrees rotation. This is a feature I find myself using a lot, especially the 180 degrees rotation. It's a cool perspective and it's a creative way to shoot certain scenery. You'll get more use out of it than you'll think because it's so particular. You might think you might only use it once or twice, but it's something you'll use often. Switching between vertical and horizontal mode, that was what even sold me on it because I initially saw this camera on TikTok. Shout out to this guy. This was the first video I saw on it. And the minute I saw the horizontal and the vertical, I was sold. It is so forward thinking and it's the perfect thing for today's creator because more than likely if you're a social media creator, you have short content and long form content and it is fantastic for that. So some add-ons that I added that I would recommend is a screen protector for the viewfinder. You'll also get one for the actual camera lens. However, I wouldn't recommend it because it degrades the quality of the camera slightly, but definitely would recommend you get in one for the actual viewfinder. Instead of using the tripod, I got a base that is just wider. Initially, I bought this plastic base. For the first two times you put it on, it sticks on pretty well. Eventually, 
suddenly it gets really loose and it falls off the DJI very easily. And also it makes it harder to hold the DJI because it has such a wide base. So instead I bought this rubber base. It sticks on the DJI way better. It doesn't fall off. And there's no reason to take it off because you can still film and hold the DJI in your hand comfortably without having to remove the base, which also makes sure that the base doesn't get looser as time goes by. So if I was to recommend any base, it will be this rubber base. Another thing I also bought obviously was a micro SD card. Those are the three things I've bought so far. Now with that being said, it is time to get into the cons of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Believe it or not, there are some cons and hopefully with future iterations of this camera, DJI can knock these out. One thing that is a huge con to me is you cannot lock the gimbal in place. There are certain ways you can lock it so that it doesn't move up and down or doesn't tilt, but you can't lock it from all angles so that it acts as a regular camera that just moves with your arm. I know it is a gimbal, but there's some times you just want to use it as a regular camera and that would be fantastic if you could and I look forward to them having that in future versions of this camera. Another con is to access the footage you have shot on this camera through the DJI Mimo app, your cellular data has to be off. If your cellular data is not off, when you go to look at your footage, all you see is black screen. You don't see anything, you can't download it and at first I thought maybe it was my SD card or maybe I just had a lemon but no, your cellular data has to be off and it is kind of annoying to have to turn off your data because a lot of times you just forget to turn back on. Another Another one is downloading times are long. It is slightly shorter if you just take out your micro SD card and plug it directly to your computer. But if you wanted to download footage from your DJI Nemo app, which is what I usually do, downloading times could be kind of long. Another thing is I do wish the battery lasted a bit longer. However, that's up for debate. I think that's subjective. Some people might think it's a very long lasting battery. In my opinion, I, I wish it was a bit longer, but there is something that helps with that problem that I'll mention in a little bit. Another thing is there is no place on this camera to add external lighting. I've checked Amazon all over to see if there's any kind of specialty DJI Osmo Pocket 3 lighting. As of this filming, I haven't found anything. Maybe there's something out there. And to be fair, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is known for having fantastic lighting in low light situations, but it'll be nice to also have just additional lighting. So I do wish you can get some kind of external lighting for it. Something that I haven't mentioned yet in this video, this gimbal charges so quickly. It is insane. It charges to 80% in 16 minutes and 100% in 32 minutes. So if you're maybe going out on a long day and you know you're not gonna be home for a while. You just bring your charger with you and you're good to go. I love this camera. Whether you are an experienced vlogger or just starting out, it's a fantastic camera to get. I would recommend it. We are on our way to 50,000 subscribers and we're getting close. So if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. I do reviews and vlogs. Join me on the journey. Yeah.